We can even use the production possibilities frontier to represent economic growth. In this setup, economic growth is represented by a shift in the production possibilities frontier, since positive economic growth would mean that you're able to make more of both of the goods than you could before. We can think about economic growth as arising for a number of reasons. Either the number of factors of production in our economy has increased, Factors of production are just things that go into the production process, such as labor, capital, etc. So if we had more labor or capital available, we're going to have more production possibilities than we had before. Another way that we can get an increase in our production possibilities or a shift in our production possibilities frontier is to have a change in technology. A positive change in technology means that we can get the more output from the same amount of resources than we could before, and that's also going to rep be represented in our production possibilities frontier. So let's think about each of these examples and consider what would happen to our original production possibilities frontier in each case. Continuing our original production possibilities frontier example, we have the following setup as our status quo. We had 100 people in our economy. Each person was working eight hours a day. They had a choice of each hour of working time. They could either make one half of a gun or they could make two pounds of butter in an hour. And we saw that the maximum number of guns that this society could produce was 400 if they did nothing else. And the maximum pounds of butter that this society could produce is 1,600 again, if they did nothing else. And we showed that the production possibilities frontier looks like something here. Because we said if we have a constant opportunity cost of butter, our production possibilities frontier is going to be a straight line. So let's consider what happens if we just increase the number of factors of production available in this economy. In this case, the only factor of production that we've explicitly outlined is labor so let's consider an increase in our labor force. And let's say that the number of people in our economy goes from 100 to 110. We don't want to change anything else. It's not like any of the individual people have gotten more productive. They're also not working more. Let's say that they're still working eight hours a day. And they still face this trade-off between half of a gun per hour and two pounds of butter per hour. But what we'll notice is if all of these people spend all their time making guns, we get more guns than we did before. Because now each person can make four guns per day, but we have 110 people rather than 100 people. So now we can get 440 guns. Alternatively, if we wanted to put all of our resources towards making butter, we could say, each person at two pounds of butter an hour for eight hours is making 16 pounds of butter times 110 people. What we're going to see there is that that actually comes out to 1,760 pounds of butter. Now you could also see this by multiplying explicitly or by noticing that if the number of people went up by 10%, then the maximum pounds of butter should also go up by 10%. And we can see graphically what this looks like over here. So again, I said one of the easiest ways to plot a production possibilities frontier is to plot the extremes, namely the points on the axes, and then fill in everything else from there. So here, if we're producing only guns, we can produce 440 guns. If we're producing only butter, we can produce 1,760 pounds of butter. And our new production possibilities frontier looks like this. Notice that it has the same slope as our old production possibilities frontier because we haven't changed the opportunity cost of butter. We still have the same half of a gun versus two pounds of butter per hour trade-off. So it should make sense that the slope hasn't changed, 
But what has changed is how many resources we have to throw at the problem. So what we're seeing is that we get a parallel shift up and to the right in our production possibilities frontier. If for whatever reason we were to experience a population decrease rather than a population increase, we would see a shift down and to the left as opposed to up and to the right. But what we see here is in fact economic expansion because our society can make more of both items than it could before. As a second example, let's consider an increase in gun technology. Here, an increase in gun technology is represented by the fact that our society, or individuals in our society, can make more guns per hour than they could before. So all we've changed here is we've gone back to our original status quo. We have 100 people. Each person's working eight hours per day. But now, rather than making one half of a gun per hour, they can make one gun per hour. Notice that their productivity in butter has not changed. They can still make two pounds of butter per hour. So now we can recalculate these figures here. If our society was to only produce guns, we would see each person making one gun per hour for eight hours a day. So each person would be making eight guns. A hundred people in our society would give us 800 guns. On the other hand, if our society was only making butter, well, our productivity in making butter has not changed. So our maximum amount of butter that we could produce is just the same as it was before at 1,600. And we can think about what this looks like on our graph. Well, the easy one is to note that if we're making only butter, this point on our production possibilities frontier hasn't changed. We're still here. The thing that has changed is that if we're making only guns, we can now make a maximum of 800 guns rather than 400 guns. So our new production possibilities frontier looks like this. Again, it represents an expansion because we're able to produce more of both goods than we were before. But what we see now is that we didn't get a parallel shift. We instead got a pivot around the item whose productivity did not change. So notice here that the slope of our production possibilities frontier went up compared to what it was before. So we can say that when there's an increase in gun making technology, we have effectively raised the opportunity cost of butter because we got better at making guns. So to make a given amount of butter, we have to give up more guns than we did before. And you don't have to memorize that because you can see that pretty clearly from a graphical perspective here. If for whatever reason we got worse at producing guns or our, produ our productivity of gun making went down, we would see the opposite. We would see a shift or pivot in of our production possibilities frontier down and to the left as opposed to up and to the right, and we would see the opportunity cost of butter go down rather than up. As a final example, let's think about what happens to the production possibilities frontier when there's a change in butter making technology rather than a change in gun making technology. So again, we're starting with the status quo set up here. But what we're doing is we're changing people's productivity in making butter. So again, 100 people, eight hours per day, those people in an hour can either make half of a gun as before, or now, rather than making two pounds of butter per hour, this increase in technology makes them more productive. They're now able to make two and a half pounds of butter per hour. So if we're going to think about the maximum number of guns that the society can produce, well, that hasn't changed. That's still here at 400. But now, if our society is solely dedicated to making butter, we have each person making two and a half pounds of butter per hour. For eight hours a day, well, each person can make 20 pounds of butter. 
100 people is going to give us 2,000 pounds of butter per day as compared to 1,600 as we had before. So we can think about what this looks like graphically in our production possibilities frontier. Again, we said the maximum number of guns has not changed, so we're still going to have a point here at 400 guns and no butter. But now what we're going to see is if we're making only butter, we can stretch out all the way here to 2,000 pounds of butter. And we're going to see, again, a pivot in our production possibilities frontier around the item whose productivity or technology did not change, in this case, guns. And we can still consider this a movement where we're going up and to the right because we're able to produce more of both goods than we could before. What we notice here is that the slope of our production possibilities frontier, in this case, has gone down. So what we can say is that the increase in butter technology, because it's made us more productive in making butter, has in fact lowered the opportunity cost of butter. If we were to instead see a decrease in butter technology for whatever reason, we would instead see a pivot in and to the left as opposed to out and to the right, and we would see the slope of this line go up rather than go down. So we can think about how each of the different changes changes the production possibilities frontier in a different way. We saw if we're simply changing the number of resources available, we get a parallel shift. 